Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. Our topic for today is about the identity of the Antichrist. On the left corner, we have D.A. Carson. He's an emeritus professor of New Testament at Trinity Evangelical Divinity School. He's the author of From the Resurrection to His Return, com Commentary on the New Testament, Use of the Old Testament, and An Introduction to the New Testament with Douglas Moo. On the right corner, we have Doug Wilson. He's pastor at Christ Church Moscow in Idaho. He's the author of When a Man Comes Around, Heaven Misplaced, and Is Christianity Good for the World? Now, D.A. Carson is a historic premillennialist, and Doug Wilson is a partial preterist postmillennialist. Now, let's listen to D.A. Carson. The term Antichrist itself is not uh, common in the New Testament. But um, most Christians associate the Antichrist with the figure presented in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and uh, with the first beast in Revelation chapter 13. But perhaps the most interesting Antichrist passage is 1 John chapter 2, verses 18 and 19. Uh, there we're told that certain people went out from us and, and they are called Antichrists. That's how we know that it's the last hour. As you have heard that Antichrist is coming, so now also already there are many Antichrists, John writes. That is, Antichrist is coming. It is understood there is a figure labeled Antichrist at the end of the age before everything finally wraps up. But John says, already there are many Antichrists. The term itself suggests either someone who stands in for Christ and tries to usurp his place, or someone who stands over against Christ and tries to diminish him. And both may be valid. That is, someone who's claiming Christ-like authority and thus is not only trying to usurp his place, but also to diminish him because of it. But, John says, there are many antichrists that have already gone out. That's how we know it's the last hour. In other words, antichrist is associated with the last hour. But the last hour can refer to the entire period between Christ's first coming and his second coming. This is the time when Christ's kingdom has dawned. And with the dawning of Christ's kingdom, so sadly, horribly, there are antichrists who are trying to diminish him, um, exploit him, uh, crush him, uh, until the very end of the age when the last enemy is finally destroyed, the last enemy being death itself. So there are antichrists today. What John does not say is, since there are antichrists now, you don't have to worry about an antichrist at the end of the age. Rather, in a much more careful way, he says, as you have heard that antichrist is coming, so also now there are many antichrists. The antichrists that function in our culture today point to an ultimate antichrist who comes before the end. Now here's D.A. Carson's position. Start from creation, and here's the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we are here in 2020, and we're looking forward to the perfect creation. For D.A. Carson, the Antichrist is a recurring personality throughout human history leading to the final Antichrist. So for Carson, the last hour that was mentioned by John starts from the first coming until the second coming. For Doug Wilson, on the other hand, is a totally different view of the last hour. The Romans to come in and do that. I think the, the concept of, the, of a personal devil is much more um, intertwined with the nature of human beings. And it's different from the Antichrist. Yes, yeah, oh yes, yes. The Antichrist is just a false teacher in the church. I think his name was Serinthus. In fact, a, a fault. Um, the Antichrist is not the the uh, person at the end of the history of the world. The Antichrist is the one who denies that Jesus is God come in the flesh. And there was a Gnostic teacher named Serinthus in Ephesus. I think John was talking about him when he uses the phrase Antichrist, and he because he denied the incarnation, and um, that's a, so. I think Serinthus was the Antichrist. The Beast was Nero. So the, uh, there's a dispensationalist have popularly confounded the beast and the Antichrist yes. as this end of the world figure, but 
if you want a modern, a modern beast would be someone like Stalin, a civil ruler who persecutes the church. A modern antichrist would be a liberal Methodist bishop who denied... <laughs> Jerry Falwell said he's, a, he's, he's here now. How can you show that Falwell was wrong? Once you assume there is such a thing, how, how, how do you show that Falwell hasn't guessed better than you? It's not guesswork, it's exegetical. So it, where does the Bible use the phrase Antichrist? In 1 John and 2 John, that's the only place. Yeah. The book of Revelation doesn't have the word Antichrist in it. It has the word beast in it. So the whole concern is the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire was the, the beast with seven heads, the seven heads are seven hills. Rome was the seven-hilled city, famous for it. The seven heads began with Julius Augustus, uh, you know, all the way through down to Nero. Oh, it's not a liberation theology. I'm not even close. <laughs> no, not, even, not even close. All right, so Doug Wilson's position in a timeline is just like this. Creation, time of Jesus Christ, 2020 in the perfect creation. Now, for Wilson, the Antichrist is Serentus. And the spirit of the Antichrist is Gnosticism, which was prevalent in the first century Christianity. For Doug Wilson, the Antichrist must be located in the first century Christianity. The last hour simply means the last hour. And for Wilson, he's a post-millennialist, so there's nothing that will hinder the growth of the kingdom of God. There's no Antichrist in the future. There's no one world government that will hinder the growth of the kingdom of God here on earth. So who is Serentus? Now Serentus is a Gnostic Christian who's contemporary of the apostles and he believes that matter is evil. Number two, the Demiurge created a physical universe. He denies God the Father as the supreme God, the creator of all things. Number three, Christ is different from Jesus. He believes that Christ descended upon Jesus during the baptism and he departed from Jesus and he left him to die on the cross. Number four, Christ is so holy that he cannot come in the flesh. Now here's the summary of Serentus' teaching according to Irenaeus. Serentus, according to Epiphanius of Salamis, founded a school in Asia Minor where the community of the Apostle John was located. Serentus, being a Gnostic Christian and a very powerful, influential teacher, had a constant clash with, with Apostles John, Paul, and Peter. Irenaeus tells us a story when John did not want to bathe with Serentus because Serentus was so evil. Here's the account. There are also those who heard from him that John, the disciple of the Lord, going to bathe at Ephesus, and perceiving Serentus within, rush out of the bathhouse without bathing, exclaiming, Let us fly, lest even the bathhouse fall down, because Serentus, the enemy of the truth, is within. Based on this account, I won't be surprised if the Apostle John called Serentus the Antichrist. The Apostle John wrote his gospel to proclaim the truth and refute Serentus. That's what Irenaeus said. John, the disciple of the Lord, preaches this faith and seeks by the proclamation of the gospel to remove the error which by Serentus had been disseminated among men. The problem is John did not specify who the Antichrist was. Now, is it possible that in John's mind, Serentus was the Antichrist, his followers were the Antichrist, plural, and his teaching is the spirit of the Antichrist? Now it's up to you to decide. You just have to read 1 John chapter 2, 18 and 19, verse 22, chapter 4, 1 to 3, and 2 John chapter 7 to 11. What is not possible is to extend the last hour in John's epistles up to thousands of years until the second coming of Christ. So I'm sorry, D.A. Carson, I don't think you have an exegetical warrant for your wild interpretation. What about you? Who do you think is more biblical? Let us know in the comment section below. If you think D.A. Carson is right, then give him a like. If you think Doug Wilson is right, then give him a heart. And please do like and follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, don't forget to check the description below because from time to time, I give an update 
for you to get more information about our diet. If you want to indulge me with favor, please share this video. Thank you very much for watching. We will meet again in the next one. God bless you.